Hi, I'm Brad Tier, and today I'm going to talk a little bit more about a blog I wrote a couple of weeks ago about the Riley method to get more energy into a drawing. Now this can be any kind of drawing you want to do. It could be a drawing of a landscape, a tree, any, any um, object, uh, as long as it's an organic object. It doesn't work so well with man-made objects. But, um, so I'm going to be doing a little bit of figure drawing here, but you know, keep in mind that all these drawing techniques relate very um, directly to the landscape. You have to get a sense of energy and movement in your landscapes, and this technique is very applicable. So if you want to read a little bit more about uh, how this technique applies to the landscape, look at my blog. I'm going to be drawing with a technique known as construction. And, and construction basically is, you know, where you you kind of search out the features of of the head, and you and you kind of draw through the form. And this is a technique that, that is pretty useful to get a nice structure to um, your your figures. And if you're looking at the model, you can just kind of you know, draw some of these, you know, like the spine and, and thing, the pelvis and stuff, and and it works pretty good, you know. But um, s some people I know don't don't like to use con um, construction, you know, the balls and tubes and, and boxes and things. So a real handy device is to use a mannequin. And and if you use a mannequin, you can just pose the the figure however you like. So the mannequin has its uses. But you know they are somewhat limited. Like this neck isn't isn't quite you know the way the jaw would come out and so on. So you know if you do use the mannequin, you're going to have to you know add some some detail. Okay, so I'm going to uh, you know set this mannequin up like a pose here, some kind of action pose or something, and um, make sure you always get that contraposto, which means um, there's an opposition of the turning of the shoulders and hips and then the arms and legs always work in opposition. You know, you'd never have a figure running like this, for example. You know, it doesn't look too bad here in the mannequin, but you draw it like that and you'll see, wow, that, that's not the way people run, you know, they run like this. So, you know, that contraposto is an idea you'll want to use. And it's actually one of the kind of underlying tenets of the Riley method, which I'm going to explain here in just a minute. The head there. And drawing any kind of drawing, whether you're drawing the figure or from nature out in, out in the field, a tree or whatever, is um, it's about measuring. So anything you can do to help you measure is, is, is legitimate and will help you get where you want to be, which is, which is an accurate drawing. And the mannequin really, you know, helps you foreshorten. You know, you can really see how things are foreshortened. So, so that's really good. And a lot of times people think the, the figure, they either foreshorten too much or not enough. I mean, it's very hard to, to get exactly right on the money. So, you know, the shoulders here are kind of an energy line. And, and my chalks aren't exactly right. I mean, I'm kind of obliterating. You'd probably want to do this maybe more in graphite, possibly. And, and you could do it much more subtly. So, so don't, don't follow exactly what I'm doing here. But what you try to do is you fi try to find energy lines through the form while you're, while you're fleshing out your, your figure. And usually you can find these really quite nicely in your legs. This this pose is a little 
atypical. I, I probably should have picked a more typical pose. But you, you know, you try to find these lines of energy. So, okay, so let's, let's do something a little bit just more straightforward. Um, kind of give you the idea of how you're supposed to do it. And I'm just going to use just a, a figure just standing. As you can see, I usually get the head too big. And if you do have a problem with you know getting the head too big, the head's usually about six times the size of, of uh, a figure, you know. So you know, not a perfect figure by any means, but I, I think it'll it'll illustrate what I need here. So, get this a little bit more symmetrical. And, you know, if you can study the skeleton, you can kind of learn some of the hard points of the, the skeleton and, and put those into your, into your drawing. You know, like that into the iliac crest and some mm -hmm. zygomatic arch and things like that, you know. Okay, so now that I've got that figure, we're going to use the Riley method to kind of hook up, hook up the, the figure. And it seems a little abstract, I know, but but you know, it really, it really is amazing how how you can get the figure to just start to to work. Because I mean, this thing hooks up to the bulge beneath the calf there, you know, and you can can start to see and feel how these forms interconnect. And you can do it with any with any you know position of the figure, but um, you know it's it's easier to demonstrate exactly what I'm trying to do with with this you know, straight on straight on figure. So you're just trying to find these these kind of intertwinings of lines. You know, the figure eight is, is often you know comes in, into play. You can see how there's this kind of looping shape here. But if you'll try it just a few times, I mean it's really it's really quite interesting how it works. So, I mean, obviously you can't connect every line. You, you don't want to. I mean, that, that, that becomes a little bit arbitrary and, and uh, you know, it just, it, it's going to look artificial. So, you know, you don't want to push it too far.